Hay bales are heavy and spending a day unloading and loading hay is hard work. So I'm going to show you something I'm doing to make it just a little bit easier. Last week I purchased one ton of hay. I was able to put the majority of the hay in the bed of my pickup truck, but I had some leftover hay that I didn't feel comfortable transporting in my half ton pickup. So my friend Richard, who happened to be at the same place, getting hay at the same time with his big trailer, offered to keep the balance of the hay in his trailer for me. So I'm at Richard's homestead today where he's sharing one of his hay stacking hacks with me. Richard, what's the game plan? How are we loading this hay? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to take the pallets that are up higher and just roll them or easily stack them on the pallet so that you're not constantly having to lift. You're just letting the, you know, just being able to use the rolling effect of the pallets because they're bound tightly and just roll them on the pallet. And then as we stack the levels, we bring the pallet down further and then you get to put those on top of that without having to work too hard. So the idea here is that any little thing that we can do to reduce the amount of wear and tear on our body makes it for a little bit easier of a day, a little bit easier going, and um, a more enjoyable experience, I think, right? Exactly. We're not getting younger. That's right. So Richard, we just moved 800 pounds-ish of hay, and, well, I didn't break a sled. I think you glistened just a little bit, but that no was... No clouds today. Yeah. <laughs> that was the least amount of work, though, to move this much hay that I've ever experienced. Exactly. Just working smart, not hard. That's right. So Richard is the proud owner of the beautiful Dexter known as Red, that we almost bought last year, but you wound up buying, so can we go take a look at her? Exactly, sure. All right, cool. <laughs> you know what I'm doing. Kim.
Okay, come on. Who's the calf this year? Who is this? This one is Biscuit. She's about a year and a half, a year, uh, excuse me, a month and a half old. And uh, the sire is uh, a ADCA registered bull. Uh, he is uh, A2A2 and um, pulled, so excellent bloodline. Um, we're not sure if she's pulled or not yet. Still a little early, but we see some nubs, so we might might not get that lucky. But it's a good possibility that she can be A2A2, which would be excellent. So, but she turned out to be a very beautiful calf, uh, black with little hints of tinted red on her. And no, it's not copper deficiency either. <laughs> some people ask that. It's just her beautiful coloring when it shines in the light. And you said it, you mentioned A2, A2. And just for the record, red is A1, A2, beta A1, casein A2, protein. Exactly. And so she was she bred with it. Possibly be, but you know, right. we're hoping because her sire was A2, A2 that uh, that uh, that she might become A2, A2. We haven't had her tested yet. If you're not familiar with what A1, A2, or A2, A2 is, that is the type of beta casein protein that is found in their milk. A2, A2 milk is considered the best, and A1 milk has, in some cases, been linked to some of the downsides you hear about milk, uh, about causing inflammation, that sort of thing. So how has it been owning the, the Dexters? Are you liking the breed? I love the breed. Um... We had looked at different breeds. We looked at obviously the Jersey, the Guernsey, uh, Mini Dexters, and um, after knowing you and knowing that Red had come available, and after seeing your video more on the Dexters, we did a lot more research into them, and it was everything we found on it. We loved the breed completely. The size, the ease of handling, the ease of milking, uh, just everything about them. For other folks who might want the opportunity to get into Dexter's if they live in the area, you might have a, an opportunity for them, is that right? Yes, um, unfortunately my health and my wife's health has not been that good and it's gone down, you know, we're just not as healthy as we used to be. We've had some recent um, um, diagnosis and unfortunately we're having to cut back and on our farm and that and the Dexters are actually the last thing to go so we are going to be selling red and biscuit the pair of them together so you know if any of your viewers or want to get into the breed or you know she's an excellent cow I really hate to lose her so if you're in the inland northwest area and you might be interested in getting this beautiful Dexter and her heifer calf this year get in touch with me dan at grassfedhomestead.com and i'll get you in touch with richard and see if you can work something out <laughs> okay I'm back at the grass-fed homestead and ideally on this end I would have a tractor too that could just unload the pallet right into our hay storage area. Sadly I don't own a tractor so that's not going to be an option. I did check with my neighbor who has a tractor to see if he were available to help uh, use the forklift to unload it but he's not available right now. I suppose I'll be resorting back to manual labor. I do have my little utility cart here though that will help me get the hay into the hay storage area. So I'll just drop the bales down onto the cart and then roll them in, which should help a little bit. All right, so you get the idea. I'm gonna be stacking hay in here for a little bit. So while I'm doing that, let's take a quick chicken intermission and I'll check back with you.
the hay is all stacked in here, which is a mission accomplished for me today because this was my big objective to get this done. And now I'm ready for a shower. So I'm gonna take off. Thanks for watching.